In this video, we're going to talk about how you can 3D print hinges. That's right, a video all about hinges. Let's get started. So I posted up on Twitter what sort of video I should do now I have fast internet. Should I do a stream or a tutorial? And the overwhelming vote was for a tutorial, which is awesome. So something I've been thinking about for some time is 3D printing being a unique technology that it is, allows you to do really interesting geometries that you can't really do in any other manufacturing process. But because of this, there's a lot of learning that you need to do when it comes to designing for 3D printing. Now, sometimes you'll need to make parts that move, that I guess hinge and there's actually quite a few techniques you can take from the injection molding world and apply them to your 3D printable designs to make hinges that print in place or have other properties. So in this video, I want to go through five uh, hinges that I've personally used and tested with 3D printing and I know that work well so you can apply them to your own designs. So one of the coolest things you can do with 3D printing is print in place designs with multiple moving parts that actually form one cohesive 3D print and can't really be separated once the print's complete. So we're going to start with this, which is what I like to call a pin hinge. So I don't know again if these have these are the correct names for these type of hinges, but I'm just going to go through what I what I know. So this hinge is pretty simple and I've designed all of these in Fusion 360, which you can have a look at after the video. But basically a pin hinge has a hollow in one part and a pin running through the center of the other part. And these have a certain distance separation depending on your printer. It is a bridge across that gap. So you may need to increase or decrease that separation distance. But for me, I did 0.3 millimeters and it actually works really, really quite well. So you end up with a hinge that is completely locked together. So this kind of hinge is fantastic for articulated designs where you want something to be able to move but not separate. And there's actually very little play uh, in terms of torsion on this print because I've got such a small tolerance. So it's actually quite accurate and you can, can get some really cool looking prints. You could even do tank tracks and that kind of thing using this kind of hinge. But keep in mind again, your bridging capabilities of your printer need to be pretty good to pull this sort of hinge off. And the next kind of hinge is this one, which has little bumps or nubs locking the two parts together. It's a variation on a pin hinge, but instead of having a pin all the way through, it has these little circular nubs that interlock together. So you'll often see this kind of hinge in injection molded boxes, where they use a sort of stronger, stiffer plastic, like an acrylic, that kind of thing. So you have nice optical clarity, but they can't do these hinges in one place, obviously injection molding, they have to snap them together afterwards, which means that you can print in place these hinges on your 3D printer, but it also means if you design them carefully with a bit of room for the materials of flex, they can snap apart. So you can design them uh, in one piece, print in place, or you can design them to snap together. So these are really, really handy because they print with no support, no issues, and you can easily make parts that snap together to each other by using this kind of design. And again, it's just two very small spheres with a small amount of tolerances. Again, I think I did 0.2 millimeters maybe of this one. Depending on your printer, you may need to increase or decrease that. But if you allow the plastic to deform, you can release them, which is really handy if you need to separate parts and then bring them back together afterwards. And again, this is in contrast with a pin style hinge, which is completely locked. This is, there's no way this is ever coming apart but with these, uh, these little nubs, you can separate them. And the next kind of hinge is known as a living hinge. So this is a really interesting type of hinge that takes advantage of certain properties of certain types of plastics, and it's extremely common in injection molding. So any low cost plastic container with a lid that opens up and it's part of the same material, look at it closely, and you'll notice that there's a very thin surface of plastic joining the two parts that allows it to fold into place as that plastic deforms. So as you could imagine, this is very material dependent. So with 3D printing, it's very much uh, an advanced technique, I would say. This very small example is printed in nylon. So the nylon, as you can see, folds nicely with that very thin gap. But as it reaches the 45 degree chamfer of this part where it gets thicker, it can't fold anymore. So you can do boxes that fold together if you're using a flexible material. But obviously this is not going to work with most PLAs unless they're modified to be flexible and even ABS will struggle. And even in injection molding, you only get a certain number of bends before this type of hinge fatigues and breaks. So it's often used, as I said, for cheap things where you only need maybe a few hundred openings and closings before that product is thrown away. 
And the next type of hinge is a variation on the living hinge. As I've shown you before, if the plastic has room to deform, you can use that as a lever or kind of hinge. So what I have here is a clasp. So basically this has a part here with a little cutout and this slides into place and the clasp will lock into that gap. Now this isn't the best design, I could refine this, but it does depend on that plastic being very thin to create a lever to uh, a sort of a fulcrum, I suppose, to open it and close it in place. And with it all in place, it locks that little uh, rod into place. But then you can lift it up by pushing that button. And because the plastic can deform slightly, it allows you to release that part. So you've often seen this kind of design for backpacks. Backpack clips use almost an identical style of, of uh, release mechanism to insert a clasp and then release it. And there's nothing stopping you from using this in your 3D printing. And as I said, you can do it on stiffer plastics, such as this PLA and ABS would also work. Also PETG would be quite suitable, but for the living style hinges where it flexes almost 180 degrees, you definitely need a more flexible material for that. And the final style of hinge would be to use a fastener. Yes, I know it's cheating, but if in some cases you have to have a very strong, long wearing, uh, long duty hinge that has some strength to it, then you kind of can't get away from using fasteners. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just design enough tolerance for that fastener to go in and use a nut on the other side. I recommend using a nylock nut if you can, or you can even tap it into plastic by making the receiving end of that hinge tighter and then threading a thread into it. So for example, an M3, you'd make that hole 2.5 millimeters and then tap it with an M3 or even force the screw in if you like. And that's gonna make, give you a very, very heavy duty hinge, much heavier duty than all of these print in place ones, but at the expense of having to add fasteners and additional hardware to your print. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you found this video useful on different types of hinges. I'm going to put the STL files up on Patreon. I'm going to link below to the Fusion 360 source files if you wanna take my examples and then use them for your own projects. And I'd love to see your, your results on using print in place hinges in your design. So absolutely hit me up on social media guys. I am at Makers Muse on Twitter and Instagram. I'd love to see your results. And of course, if you enjoyed watching this video on Makers Muse and want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks and reviews, hit the subscribe button. It helps me out a massive amount and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Happy printing guys. See you later.